In this video, we will talk about space-time diagram. But to do that, first we need to understand the behind the scene of how an event is observed and an object's motion is tracked in a specific manner suitable in context of spatial relativity. This gives rise to the idea of world lines of objects and observers in a space-time diagram. This also helps us grab the reason behind putting space and time together as a unified entity called space-time. Finally, we consider the world line of photons and see how that leads us to the concept of light cone in a space-time diagram. An event is an occurrence, something happening somewhere at some instant of time. Here, something is the event. Somewhere refers to its location in space and at some time refers to the timestamp associated with it. To locate this somewhere quantitatively, an observer associates three special coordinates to it, say the Cartesian coordinates x, y, z or spherical polar coordinates r, theta, phi, etc. Similarly, the timestamp is that particular reading of the observer's clock which is simultaneous with the occurrence in question. Thus, in physics, we think of an event as a point P with spatial and temporal coordinates. In Galilean relativity, time has an absolute status, meaning all observers in all reference frames, inertial or non-inertial, perceive time in exactly the same manner. This we discussed in an earlier video, so check the i button for it. So absolute time means timestamps assigned to an event by observers in all reference frames agree with each other or at most they can differ by a constant amount if an observer happens to start his or her stopwatch earlier or later. Notice that spatial coordinates of an event totally depend on which observer is assigning them and how he or she has laid down the coordinates. The choice of origin, the orientation of axis, the observer's state of motion, all that will be deciding factors. However, these varied assignments of spatial coordinates to this one event can of course be connected with the help of coordinate transformations and all of them also agree on the actual physical location of the event in space. Also one can go back and forth in space but not in time. Thus in physics we always try to find out how things will be at a future instant that is we want the power to predict. Therefore, when we construct theoretical models of a physical phenomena, the end goal in our mind is always to work out how things pan out in time, that is, how the system evolves. For example, in mechanics, we say we have solved the problem if we are able to express the physically relevant quantities like position, velocity, momentum, energy, etc. as functions of time so that we can predict their values at any future time. So for a graphical representation of this, we show positions of a particle at different time instants in a x versus t plot. Such a collection of points in this plot gives us the particle's track. A particle's track can go back and forth on the position axis since a particle can always go back to its position let us say x1 where it was at an earlier time t1 in the figure at a later time t2 or t3. However, it doesn't double back along the time axis, since that would mean the particle is at two or more places at the same time. If you want to see such a thing, watch some Hollywood sci-fi flicks like Back to the Future or the Avenger movies in recent time. However, in real life that is not possible, at least within classical physics. The quantum physics does have some surprises, but let's ignore that for now. Important thing to remember here is that when we plot such a graph to visually represent a particle's track, we are essentially representing the perspective of one reference frame, that is, the point of view of one observer and all his fellow observers who are at rest with respect to this first guy and positioned at different locations in space. Note that all these observers are in the same reference frame, let's call it x1. This point will come in handy to clear a lot of confusion when one talks about observations of events in context of spatial relativity. Now. If we turn things around a bit and plot the time axis vertically and position axis horizontally, what we get is called the space-time diagram and an object's track in this diagram is called its world line. Since everything has to keep moving forward in time, so the world line of an object sitting still at some location x1 say in the space is a line continuously moving vertically upwards parallel to the time axis. In fact, the time axis is nothing but the world line of the observer sitting at the spatial origin drawing this particular diagram. And the fixed locations of his fellow observers at the initial time t equal to zero come together to form the spatial axis in this diagram. All these static observers move forward in time, each along his own vertically upward world line, and we can think the spatial axis, that is the whole space, is also going forward in time. In a way, the space-time diagram is a chronological collection 
of special hypersurfaces, a new one for each passing instant of time stacked upon the older pile. How does the world line of a moving object appear in this space-time diagram? To track a moving object, the team of observers in S1 frame will follow a simple strategy. Each will note down his own clock reading when he sees the object passing him. Since the clocks these observers carry are all synchronized and their locations are fixed with respect to the origin, this way when they combine all their data, they will know exactly where the object was at any given instant of time. In other words, the track or world line of that object. Perhaps you have now realized why space-time as a unified concept is more fundamental than space and time individually. Because in space-time, we are always in motion. Even if we are at rest, we automatically move through time. So world line in a space-time diagram gives us a more holistic view of an object's motion than tracing its path only through space. Now that we have the basics of how observation of an object's motion are to be carried out, let us fix the convention for coordinates that are used to chart out the object's motion in a space-time diagram mathematically. In a recent video, we discussed the postulates of spatial relativity. Check it out if you have not already, I'll put the link in the i button for that. In that video, we discussed some thought experiments and established that according to the postulates of spatial relativity, observers in different inertial frames may not agree on the simultaneity of events. This in turn implies that time flows differently for different inertial observers. Remember, in Galilean relativity, spatial coordinates of an event would differ for different inertial frames, but its temporal coordinate or time reading is the same for all of them. But in spatial relativity, even the time coordinate would differ as the spatial ones do, as we move from one inertial frame to the next. So we put the time coordinate in the same basket as the space coordinates and call this coordinate collective as space-time coordinate. We symbolize all of them together as x mu, where the index mu runs over the values 0, 1, 2, and 3. x0 represents time coordinate. For future convenience, we bring in the speed of light c as a multiple and write it as ct. This has some advantages when we express the mathematical formula in a particular way, but that will come in some other video. Mu equal to 1, 2, and 3 represent the three spatial coordinates x, y, z respectively for a Cartesian system and are collectively written as vector x or in component form as x, i with i taking values 1, 2, and 3, etc. On a side note, these may represent other type of spatial coordinates like r theta phi or rho phi z, etc. as well if we need to work with curvilinear coordinates instead. We can if that is advantageous for solving certain problem, despite the overload of Cartesian coordinates that we see in relativity books. With the notation of space-time coordinates fixed, let us now consider an object that clearly obeys the rules of spatial relativity and see how its space-time diagram looks and what it can tell us. The obvious candidate is of course the photon or light particle. These are tiny quantum mechanical beings carrying energy and momentum, help us see things but are themselves invisible. So let us imagine an event point P in space with spatial coordinates x e vector where a light source emits photons in all directions at the time instant T e. So the space-time coordinate of the photon emission event P is thus T e and x e vector. These space and time readings are as per the location and clock reading of the inertial observer who happens to be present right at the spatial location of the event point P at the time of the photon emission. We have talked about this earlier but just to reiterate, you need to think that any observation in spatial relativity is done by a team of infinite number of observers sitting still all across space, at least at all space points carrying synchronized clocks and each will observe what is happening at his or her location only. Though it seems like a terrible waste of resources, but we are just imagining a theoretical construct so we need not worry about such things. We already know how photons move with respect to all inertial observers, we just have to figure out their world line in a space-time diagram. As they travel at constant speed c in all directions, so these photons will spread radially outwards from the emission point p and they are always on a spherical surface which is expanding at a constant rate. This surface is called the wavefront of the emitted light by the way. Since in a space-time diagram, the vertical direction is reserved for the time axis, so we will have to work with the horizontal two-dimensional surface available to us for drawing the picture to indicate all spatial directions. So the light rays will be confined to this horizontal plane instead of an expanding sphere, and we will compromise by drawing an expanding circle to show the wavefront, all the while keeping in mind that it is actually a sphere. So let us now draw the axis for the spatial coordinates. We can do that at least for the two of them, for example, let us say x and y, keeping the z-axis suppressed. Note that 
we have infinitely many observers at all locations in space among them the one who sees the light being emitted at his or her location that is at point p might as well serve as the observer at the spatial origin then x e vector will be 0 0 0 similarly the observer can start his clock precisely at the time of emission t e which basically means setting t e to 0 as well all the photon tracks or world lines in this space time diagram must have such a slope that their speed dx dt gives rise to the value c since the time axis is not t but x0 that is ct as per our convention in this space time diagram this means the slope dx vector dx0 that is dx vector c dt which is nothing but v by c uh, must be 1 so each photon world line will make a 45 degree angle with the time axis as well as with the space axis Put together, these photon world lines create what is known as the light cone. Since we know from experience that no material body can move faster than light, the ratio V by C, that is speed in units of light speed, for all material body must be less than 1. Thus the world line of all material body or material objects will have a lesser slope and must lie within the light cone. Lower the slope, slower the speed. As the body moves faster and faster, its world line will tilt more and more towards the light cone but never actually surpass it. Before we finish, let me mention that the light cone we demonstrated here is called the forward light cone as it is a collection of all possible world lines of photons that start from the event point P and go in all directions as time moves forward. It so happens that there is a backward light cone as well which for the point P will look like a mirror image of the forward one. Can you guess what this backward light cone physically represent? Let me know in the comment section and we will take it from there in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.